Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I love Jesus, and I trust that you do as well. You know, when we say that we love Jesus, this indicates a relationship. Jesus isn't a bumper sticker on the back of our car, something we do on Sunday mornings, a flag we hang outside our house, but he is our life. And as with any relationship, there are stages in that relationship. So the question that I would ask you this morning is how much do you love him? Is Jesus your all in all? Is he more important than anything in your life? your friends, your family, your material possessions, your dreams, your goals. Be honest with yourself this morning. Where are you in your relationship with the Holy One? Is he a convenience unto you or is he your life? In every relationship, there are ups and downs, but there are ways that we can rekindle those fires. And in order to do that, we must go back to the basics. Look at a human relationship, for example. Oftentimes, the reason the relationship goes stagnant is because the dating has gone by the wayside. The passion has been lost because the little things have been forgotten. And the little things for us as his people in our relationship with him is reading our Bibles, which I hope that you are reading your five chapters every day. Devoted prayer to him which is important, but keeping our hearts in an attitude of prayer and remaining in fellowship with him every waking moment is the way that we rekindle those fires. Allowing him to examine our hearts and bring to our attention things that he does not find pleasing. These are ways that we rekindle that passion, friends. So if you can't answer the question today that you are passionately truly, deeply in love with the Lord Jesus, go back to the basics, friends. And surprisingly, you will find him there waiting for you. Well, today is November 6th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our review in the book of Hosea, and we're going to start in chapter 6 today, and I want you to notice one verse. But before we get there, let's pick up in verse 1. Come, let us return unto the Lord. That's the key, friends. We live in a modern society that constantly wants to be progressing forward. And the things of the Bible are old-fashioned. Let's just throw them by the wayside. Because we are a more civilized people. That's what they tell us. But the Bible says, come and let us go back. Let us return unto the Lord. Let us keep the simple old-fashioned ways. For he has torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. But notice this verse right here in context. Verse number two. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Now, obviously, this isn't two 24-hour days. This is prophetic language. And in order to understand this, let us go to 2 Peter chapter 3, and let us begin at verse 1. Now, Peter says this second epistle, because we are in 2 Peter, so this is his second letter to this church. He says, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds, by way of remembrance. We've told you these things before, but we want to remind you of them. Look at verse 2, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, all the men of God in the Old Testament, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, those who were chosen to carry forward the message of the Lord Jesus in the New Testament. So both the old and the new are covered here. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, 
they're going to scoff at the old ways. They're going to tell us that the things that the Bible teaches are old and out of date. And they're going to do this according to their own lust, the desires of their own hearts. And they'll decorate this poison apple, so to speak, by saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, since the days of Abraham, since the days of Moses, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You say that we're in the end of times. They've been saying that for thousands of years. And they'll say this in a mocking fashion. I'm sure that you've heard it. But look at verse 5. This they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So just as they mocked in the days of Noah before the flood, and yet the flood came, so shall they mock in the days of the end of times, and yet the end will come. Jesus will return, hallelujah. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, the same way that he is keeping them now, with his very word, the end will come. Destruction will come. Fire will destroy the earth. And we read about this in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12, where it says, This shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Now, I'm not saying that's a nuclear bomb, but it certainly sounds like one. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes or in their sockets, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. This fire to come will be a penetrating fire that will bring total destruction in one moment, friends. And that's what Peter's talking about here in chapter 3, verse 7. But then in verse 8, he says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, I want to offer you a theory on this verse in chapter 6 of Hosea, verse 2. After two days, will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Now, this is an idea believed by many Bible scholars, and their suggestion is this. The earth and all therein was created in six days. On the seventh day, God rested. Now, man has been upon earth for 6,000 years, 2,000 before the flood, 2,000 after the flood till the time of Jesus, and of course, from the time of Jesus to where we are today, 2,000 years. Now, that would be 6,000 years. And if God is to rest on the seventh day, the time of rest would be represented as the thousand-year tribulation. Now, they take this idea because of what Peter just said. A thousand years is with the Lord as one day, and one day a thousand years. So if the six days of creation represent man's time on earth, and we truly have been here for 6,000 years, and the seventh would be the time of rest where we rest in the millennial reign with the Lord Jesus, absent of sin, pain, suffering, heartache, and the like. And this is a prophecy speaking of the days after the Messiah, when again he says, after two days or 2,000 years, will he revive us, which they say would mean to be to glorify us in our new bodies, and in the third day or the third thousand year or the seventh thousand years, we shall live in his sight. And verse 3 speaks of who shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if... That is a big if, friends, if we follow on to know the Lord, if we continue in our relationship with him. As Revelation chapter 3 tells us, we can't be cold 
And we certainly can't be lukewarm. We have to be passionately burning hot in our relationship with him. And he will come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. And so if Bible scholars and theologians are right, friends, that would put us in the last days. Now, there are many other reasons why we believe we are in the last days, more than ever any time in the history of man. But this is just another indication, friends, that we are there. And Hosea tells us that again in verse two. But the real lesson to take from this passage is in verse one. Come and let us return unto the Lord. If we haven't read our Bibles in a very long time, come, let us return. If we haven't prayed in a very long time, come, let us return. If we haven't offered his truth to others in a very long time, come, let us return. If we haven't examined our hearts, come, let us return. If we haven't humbled ourselves under his mighty hand, come, let us return. If we haven't loved others more than ourselves, come, let us return. You see, friends, we are so prone to follow our own ways, our own heart. And this will lead us so far astray that when we turn around to find him, to look for him, we can't even see him anymore because he is so far off in the distance. And yet his simple message is to us, come, let us return. Oh, friend, I pray that as you look deeply into your life today, as you examine your relationship with the Lord Jesus. If you've even taken one step to the left or one step to the right off the narrow path, come friends, let us return. For there, he who loves you most is waiting for you. And he offers you the joy of heaven and the splendor of his glory, if only you will come. Well, I love you friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us today. I've heard from many of you, and I know the Lord Jesus is touching your life so deeply, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. I pray that you will continue with our Lord, and you will be a blessing to all those you encounter. Now, two things before we leave this morning, friends. We've begun a study after the road to Calvary on this small, tiny book. You can see how small it is. It's called Humility by Andrew Murray. Now, I went back to the month of March and I uploaded all of our first John series that we did back then into a playlist so others can find them if searching the internet. And because of this, our study, which just started two days ago on humility, was buried. So you may not see it. And so I just wanted to remind you about it because if you were touched, if you were blessed, which I know that I, I was very much so, by the road to Calvary, this book has moved me more deeply than any book outside of the Bible I've ever read. And I encourage you to participate in this study. Because if there's anything that could be said about our Savior, our Lord, our King, our Master, more than any other quality, friends, it is that of humility. And this is the quality that we need in our lives the most. And I can assure you it is so often misunderstood this study will help clarify that for you. The last thing I'd like to mention is after we finish our review of the book of Hosea, the next book we're going to look at is going to be one of two. I told you yesterday it would be Romans, but I feel like the Lord is impressing me with the book of Hebrews. So I want to hear from you. I want to know what you desire. Would you like to do a review on the book of Romans or would you like to do a review on the book of Hebrews? Your thoughts on this matter combined with my prayers unto the Father will help guide me in making the right decision. When I love you, friends, I truly love you. And I pray that you are pressing deep into the things of God and it is having an effect on your entire life. Now, as he wills and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video. Music